Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at OneElect, and today we're going to be looking at node pools on Azure Kubernetes services. Today we're looking at node pools on Azure Kubernetes services. A node pool allows you to have different kinds of compute on Azure Kubernetes clusters. Basically what you can do with a node pool is have a set of nodes that have either a different version of Kubernetes running or a different size VM running on that particular node pools. Now, when AKS first launched, you could have a single set of nodes and they were basically all identical to one another, but this allows you to have variability in different kinds of nodes on your pool. And so this allows you to delegate different kinds of workloads to specific nodes that are more optimal for a given set of work. And you can also mix operating systems within node pools as well. So a given set of nodes can be running Linux, while another set of nodes can be running Windows. So this allows you to run both Windows containers and Linux containers in the same cluster on Azure Kubernetes services. Now, each pool will have a different node count, so they can be scaled independently of one another as well. So if I want a majority of my work to go to a specific node pool, I can have, say, 10 nodes on that one, but I need a specialized work uh, to be performed on a different set of nodes. I can have a different kind of VM and then delegate that work to a different set of nodes and maybe only have two or three nodes in that particular node pool that is, say, for maybe database work or for batch processing or something along those lines. And work in these loads can be delegated for a specific work pool, as we already mentioned. And this allows me to have the ability to control the way my cluster behaves rather than having everything run in a homogenous node pool across my entire cluster. Every Kubernetes cluster starts with master nodes, and these are provided for free on Azure, and you never actually get exposed to them, and you really don't need to because they are free. It's a managed service, and you never really have to touch them. And every cluster needs at least one node pool, and when you create a cluster and th that's from the portal or from the command line, and you don't tell it to use uh, node pools, it's going to create a node pool anyway, and it's going to have a specific number of nodes in that node pool, and that's your default node pool, essentially. And and it might, and all the nodes in that would be uh, homogenous to one another. But in the event that I want to use node pools, then I can start tuning those to my specific likings. So in my default node pool, I have a bunch of DS1 VMs running version 1.14 of Kubernetes, and these are Windows nodes, and these would be used for running Windows containers. And now let's say somewhere down the line, I need to run some Linux containers. So I add a second node pool, and on this second node pool, I use B2MS VMs. I'm still running Kubernetes 1.4, and I'm running Linux here as well. And say these are just for running maybe my web servers. And then I get, have a need to run some database applications on my Kubernetes cluster. So I go ahead and add in a third node pool, and it's running some beefier E2V2 VMs version 1.13 of Kubernetes, and these are Linux nodes. So in this hypothetical node cluster here, I have a set three node pools, and they're all running uh, different operating systems uh, or different versions of, of Kubernetes or different size VMs. And I can then use node selectors to delegate work according to what these nodes pools are intended for. I'm here in the Azure portal and I've already created two node pools. So if you're looking at the overview of your Kubernetes cluster, you can simply go down here to node pools and then add a new node pool here. And this is a fairly basic form to fill out. You give it a name and then you tell it what operating system you want. And then you tell it what version of Kubernetes you want. And then you can tell it what size of the node pool you want. And then you can choose the size of the VM. I chose a Linux node and a node type. And then I called mine uh, pool one and I have one VM and I should chose a B2S. So this is a fairly minimalist node pool for my demo here, but you can add umpteen uh, 100 nodes to a particular node pool if you so desire it's very possible to do that but i have limitations on my subscriptions that would prevent me from doing that so i'm not going to go i'm not going to do that for this demo but i do want to show you that i did create that's how you would create that 
And I've already created these, and these can take a few minutes to spin up because it's behind the scenes what it's doing is creating a VM scale set, and then it's adding virtual machines to that VM scale set so that you can have the dynamic scale of those if you want to auto scale these kinds of things and so on. So after you've added a node pool to your cluster, the next thing you'll want to do is taint the nodes. Now this is a process in Kubernetes that gives you the ability to filter out pods from being deployed to a node pool based on what is called a taint. And to do that, it's pretty simple. You call kubectl taint, and it's a command built into the kubectl where you tell Kubernetes that you want to taint a specific node or nodes, and you give it a value, key value pair, and then a particular uh, effect that you want it to have. So the key value pair in this case is stack equals node.js, and I want to set the effect to node schedule. So basically what this is, does is it says, unless there's something called a toleration that matches my taint, don't schedule anything on this node pool or this node. And this will allow me to filter out deployments to my specific nodes on my node pool. So I can simply select that and now it's tainted. And now I'm going to run a similar one on another node pool. I put this one on my uh, AKS Kate's pool. And then I have another one that I want to taint. And this is on my agent pool. And I'm going to schedule my set a node schedule for a game on this one. So I want a game to deploy to this one, unless it's commander keen, I don't want anything else on this particular node pool. So now both of my nodes are, uh, are tainted. And those are in different node pools. Now they don't have to have be in node pools to do that. But what you would want to do is taint your node pools so that you have basically identical machines in all of your node pools. So you want to apply a given set of taints to those so that you will end up with a filter so that you can delegate responsibilities to specific node pools if you so choose to do it that way. It's not necessary uh, to do it, but it's a way to allow you to take advantage of the different kind of compute that you have on node pools. So once I have that ready, I can come over here and look at two different YAML files that I have defined already. Now, down in my container spec, there is a or my pod spec really, I have a toleration set. Now the counterpart to a taint is a toleration. So basically what a toleration is gonna do is look for nodes that have taints that match my toleration. So in this case, I'm saying game equals keen and the effect is no schedule. I want the, pod, I want the pod to be deployed to a node that has that taint to it. Similarly, if I come over here and look at this particular one, I have a toleration here set to stack equals node.js and no, no schedule as well. Up here though, I want you to notice something on my other deployment up here. I don't have toleration set. So something's gonna happen when I do this. It's not, not gonna actually deploy these pods because it's not gonna be able to find nodes that it will be able to deploy these to because all the nodes in my cluster are tainted and this one does not have a toleration set. So let's go in and actually deploy these and see what happens. I'm back here in my command prompt and I'm going to go ahead and deploy those resource files that I created already. So I'm going to go kube control create dash f and then call keen that yaml. And then I'm also going to call node yaml as well. And these are going to create those resources. Now what this is going to create is actually seven pods. So if I do kube ctl get pods, we should see those pods created. Now, what I have here is this is the one that I created from the Keen YAML, and it is has, it has the toleration set for a particular node that I tainted, so that the toleration matched the node. Now, this particular set of pods right here is going to remain pending, and the reason why this one will remain pending is because all the nodes in my cluster are tainted and so this one had no tolerations so it will not deploy to any of those nodes it will wait until 
a node comes open that doesn't have a taint on it that will allow me to deploy these particular pods to. Now these bottom three deployed to the other node that I had in my set of nodes and this one had a toleration for the taint that I put on the second node that I created in my agent pool. So you can see here that I have these up and running. Now if I take any one of these pods and I do a kube CTO and then I do a describe pod, um, you can get a detail output of the, the pod itself and then it will tell you where that pod is running and on what node it's running. So this one is running on agent pool right here and that is the one that was created by default that I had tainted uh, first that had the game equals keen as the taint and that's the toleration I set. Now if I do get pods again and I look at one of these pods I can do the same command describe this and it would give me the same kind of input and the same kind of data here and this is running on that other node the K8's pulse pool that I created that is then the second a node pool that I created for my AKS cluster. And then this toleration on this particular pod matches the taint that I applied to this node. So with taints and tolerations, you can delegate workloads to specific kinds of nodes, and you can actually imply, uh, apply the taints in mass too. You don't have to apply it one node at a time like I did here, but that is the basic concept of how you can use different nodes for different kind of workloads and then sort those workloads out using taints and tolerations. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.